The problem with service is really it's time. So I think if you put a price on your time. Today we're meeting Mira Twaini, a nutritionist and the founder of Health Quarters. So I opened the polyclinic in Beirut in 2014. So basically I opened in August 2014. The big opening was in January 2015. We worked a lot on the space, we arranged everything. Uh, khalas, the logo, the, I don't like the whole event, uh, the, the pictures, the whatever. Khalas, and it took shape in January, end of January 2015. What would you say the biggest difference between working as an employee versus like going on your own? Technically, you don't have an income anymore. You don't work, you don't get money. I really wanted something. And if I stop working for a week, and my life doesn't stop. So this is where I was like, you know, okay, you know, I'm not having uh, enough money, but I knew in Anjad, my father really helped in setting the scene and telling me, you know, this is going to be hard. You have a, to have a plan over five years and you don't expect. And you know, so I was a bit calmer. And basically it was the stability and the lack of, uh, of, of income. But, but what was the rewarding part? It's very personal. I and mean, when people, they like you, they like you. They like the way, uh, they like the space, they like the way they felt. This is like, I love human contact. So basically, it was very rewarding to see people that love me and the space that really represents me. And so I felt like, okay, okay, you know, every, in every meeting, every appointment was very rewarding. So I'm really uh, scared of asking money. I always feel like I'm asking too much, and which is wrong. And I have a colleague that left the clinic and moved to Paris during the crisis. And he told me if I were to come back to Lebanon, I would be so different. I would put high prices. I have truth highly. And I'm always asking and being very shy of asking money. And this is something I really need to work on. Based on this, I would really assess how much my hour cost. I did that actually with my father at first. The problem with service is really it's time. So I think if you put a price on your time, uh, it would be easier to, to price everything else. When sometimes I used to be like, where do you live? I live in front of my clinic. So I was like, yeah, you know, Creno, uh, ah, health quarters. Ah, uh, yes. And, uh, so then I realized that people knew my place without knowing me, because obviously there are other people. So this is where I also realized, you know, ah, uh, I, I remember talking to someone, they were like, yeah, there's a medical center there. I was like, yeah, it's mine. Uh, <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. This felt also like success for me. How do you follow innovation or how do you make sure that you're still current in whatever you're doing? So I really follow the things I like. I follow a lot of conferences and trainings online uh, mm -hmm. and courses. And usually I do a lot of workshops. So I present a lot of workshops. So usually when I do that, I really work a lot on my presentation and it keeps me up to date. So I do it always also for me. What do you feel was the role of the tribe and how did it add value to you? Look, honestly, I loved it. <laughs> I recommended it a lot. A lot of friends joined. The weekly sessions were okay, sometimes mind-blowing, sometimes not applicable to me. So, uh, But anyway, I always used to learn something. And it was very inspiring to see all the women trying to achieve a lot of things. Sometimes I felt overwhelmed. I don't have kids, but I'm like, oh my God, she has three kids and, uh, and she does that. And uh, what's my excuse? So it was very inspiring. I love the trio uh, that you, Lara and Raya. Can you talk a little bit about the importance in family? Uh, the support of my sisters, you know, as like in, through the branding and through the fact that it really helped me thought about everything I wanted to do, how I wanted to position myself, and they did everything. So they helped a lot in this sense. What was a bit hard for me, it was that I don't have a nine to five job. So I used to stay in my office just to say, you know, I'm here. And then I had my sister, Raya and Lara, which was working until 8 p.m. at night. And then I was shy to pass by her office at like 4 p.m. because I was done. But then I was, I, when I shared this, actually, uh, this is where I realized that no one was uh, even questioning uh, if I work or not and if I'm, uh, uh, if I'm successful or not. So it was actually you know, all in my head. What makes you wake up and say, this is going to be a great day? It's going to be very cheesy, but and really helping people feel, feel better. If I feel like I helped someone, I made someone feel happy, I'm really, really super happy. It can be my, my nieces and nephews that I love. And whenever they're happy or like I did a small thing with them and they see it as a huge thing, I'm so happy and so grateful for all of that. So 
really like the sense of belonging I think makes me feel so happy. It was uh, very, very insightful, very interesting. What I'm loving about these tribe interviews is that you are so different from one another and still every single one of you is so inspiring uh, to hear. Uh, it was amazing. It's amazing to be part of this tribe.